On April 21st, after two rounds of voting, a new president was elected in Ukraine. Volodymyr Zelensky, a popular entertainer with no real political experience, seemingly came out of nowhere and captured the most resounding win ever by a Ukrainian president. Zelensky will replace current president Petro Poroshenko, who will officially leave his post in June. Recently, I discussed the Ukrainian election process and results with Eugene Chuli, the head of mission of the Ukrainian World Congress International Observation Mission to Ukraine's 2019 elections. Hello, Eugene. How are you? Did you get some rest? Hi, Tanya. I uh, am going to rest when I come back to Canada. Uh -huh. <laughs> so the presidential elections in Ukraine have taken place, and Ukraine yeah. has a new president, Volodymyr Zelensky. Uh, the people have spoken. Democracy has won in the end. Uh, so how did the work of the Ukrainian World Congress mission uh, go in the second round? Well, first of all, when you say that democracy won at the end, I would venture to say that democracy won throughout the whole process, ah. including at the end, uh, which is a great and historic moment for Ukraine. For the Ukrainian World Congress, we had a uh, substantial mission uh, where we had over 249 uh, observers, short-term observers, from 33 countries uh, that were registered with the Central Election Commission. And uh, if you add to that the uh, number of, of observers from our member organization, the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America, we had 337 short-term observers. They have observed the electoral process in 19 oblasts in Ukraine and in 25 countries uh, where voting took place in diplomatic missions of Ukraine. Uh, we were actually the only uh, mission that was uh, monitoring the electoral process in the various countries in the world and in Ukraine uh, we were the third largest uh, uh, election observation mission after the OSCE and ENEMO. In addition to that, we have uh, uh, 122 long-term observers that are doing mod media monitoring in 28 countries in 15 languages of the world. So a substantial mission that is covering various aspects uh, and, get, and heavily involved in the electoral process and proud to be part of uh, history making in Ukraine. How long will the media monitoring go? The uh, media monitoring started uh, at the beginning of March and it will uh, definitely go th until the end of the parliamentary elections in, uh, in October. Now, uh, em emotions ran high throughout the, both rounds of the elections and they're running high still in the early lead up to the parliamentary elections. Uh, Ukraine is at war and I think that you would agree that uh, it's important that things should remain calm. I wonder if you have any words of wisdom that you can offer to Ukrainians overall, regardless of what side of the aisle they're sitting on. I think the uh, words of wisdom have been uh, uh, clearly already heard uh, uh, throughout this process because notwithstanding uh, the, uh, the fact that Ukraine is the victim of a vicious hybrid uh, aggression from the Russian Federation for now over five years, uh, the governing authorities and the, uh, the police force uh, and the various units uh, that are uh, uh, mandated to uh, secure the electoral processes have succeeded uh, in a manner uh, that, that is uh, in incredible. U Ukraine's elections uh, were in both rounds were democratic, were, were transparent, uh, were uh, given very high marks by uh, international observation missions. Uh, there were no major incident uh, in terms of security that is worthwhile reporting about. And the uh, cyber attacks from the Russian Federation clearly lost against the firewalls of Ukraine. Uh, so we had, uh, the, the authorities have clearly uh, succeeded in ensuring a, a democratic process. Um, and I think that uh, perhaps one of the, uh, a, a typical example of that is that the, the debate that was organized uh, fairly last minute in a stadium with a substantial number of people to have secured 
uh, that endeavor uh, in the way it was, where it was uh, a debate uh, and, and the the process of people getting in and out in a, in a, tr a very orderly manner, just to demonstrated to what high level the authorities were ready for all kinds of uh, uh, events, uh, and they certainly. Uh, uh, have passed the test and I have actually encouraged Ukrainian authorities to offer support to other countries including to European countries uh, on the eve of the parliamentary elections in, uh, in the EU and then in other countries in order to ensure uh, and to protect the electoral system of a country against foreign interference. So I think that uh, uh, clearly from that perspective, uh, the message was heard here. And I think that even the statement that was made by President Poroshenko at the end, when he conceded victory, was done in a very statesmanship uh, manner, uh, which again indicated uh, that Ukraine uh, has uh, clearly passed the test of democracy uh, for, for an election. And I think that uh, from what I see here in Kiev, people are ongoing uh, with their daily lives in a very orderly manner. Nobody's uh, uh, acting in, in any way that, that, that is uh, troubling for, 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 for me as uh, an observer on the ground. Oh, well, that's good to hear. And now, what about the parliamentary elections? Uh, will your mission have the same people? Is it new people? Is it the same number of people who will be observing? We are counting uh, actually, uh, uh, Tanya, on a higher number oh. because I think people understand that it's an important parliamentary election. And as I've uh, said during uh, our last interview together, uh, we had a very big challenge in the second round in that it was Easter for a lot of mm -hmm. Ukrainians, so it was very difficult to mobilize. So it's all to the credit of our short-term observers that they came in such large numbers, uh, despite the fact that they essentially had to make the choice between spending Easter with their family or coming to observe an election uh, in, in Ukraine. Uh, so we're counting on, on the mission to pick up uh, and I think that uh, the message that has clearly resonated is uh, from uh, uh, various uh, uh, corners uh, was that the Ukrainian people uh, trust the most during this election the candidate for whom they vote and international observers. And I think that uh, those that have observed clearly feel that they have been part of something huge uh, and will certainly, I, I uh, hope, convey that message to their friends during the summer months. And, and that's why I'm counting on an even larger number in October for the parliamentary elections. Well, that's excellent. Uh, I wish you very good luck with that. And are you coming back now to Canada and then going back to Ukraine later? Or will you be going to Ukraine over the summer as well? Uh, I am uh, coming back uh, tomorrow, actually, uh, and uh, we'll be drafting our final report, which will include some recommendations uh, as to uh, the electoral process, uh, where we'll be raising things like the fact that when you have a debate, uh, currently the legislation provides for the debate to be uh, held on, a, on the Friday, uh, uh, a couple of hours before the day of silence, uh, with Sunday then being the election day. Uh, from our perspective, uh, the legislation should provide if there's only one debate, that that debate should be held at least one week before the elections mm -hmm. in order to enable experts, uh, NGOs, civil society, essentially to discuss and debate the debate itself. Uh, another uh, recommendation that we'll be making is to strike uh, or repeal a, a, the day of silence uh, as a thing of the past. Clearly today it's not important whether a billboard is still up uh, on Saturday or not, uh, when in social media mm -hmm. uh, and anybody that has a substantial number of Facebook friends could influence a heck of a lot more people than 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 a billboard on uh, on the outskirts of Kiev, for instance. Mm -hmm. So that that is a second recommendation. A third recommendation that we'll be making is something that I've already mentioned to you the last time. Uh, the when we reviewed the legislation. Uh, regarding the judicial uh, process, uh, one can technically today 
have uh, a, uh, an absurd situation where the highest court uh, uh, would be examining uh, or uh, uh, an issue as to who should be in the second round on the day that people vote uh, on the second mm. round. So clearly, although that did not happen, uh, that's certainly something that should be corrected in the legislation and we have uh, recommendations on that issue. And finally, uh, regarding the, the process in Ukraine, uh, that candidates, particularly in the second round, because it's kind of difficult to achieve when there are 39 candidates in the first round, but at least in the second round to ensure that uh, candidates have equal uh, time and uh, uniform representation uh, in, in mass media. Uh, in view of the fact also that we have seen a substantial turnout in, in the first round, over 60%, and in the second round, over 62% uh, of voters. We clearly think that the Ukrainian voter now, or the Ukrainian electorate, believes in the system much more than in the past, and therefore we can be addressing such issues as voting, uh, uh, electronic voting, voting by mail, which uh, f uh, will clearly improve the percentage of uh, Ukrainians that vote uh, uh, during these elections from uh, the Ukrainian diaspora. Those are some of the recommendations that we'll be making uh, and I'll be doing that uh, during uh, the upcoming months and then uh, traveling uh, uh, both to Ukraine and uh, probably some other strategic countries in order to convey our reporting regarding the elections and on foreign interference uh, and how to counter it effectively. Well, I'll talk to you then uh, a little later, in a few months. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I'm Tanya Stech, and this was Ukraine in the News.